Hi, I'm Jennifer from Wesley, and today I wanted to tell you just a little bit about our application process. You can always email me if you have any questions, but hopefully I can walk you through some of the basic steps today to just help answer some of those basic questions. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to fill out our application form. So you can either go to our website and have the online application form and fill it out there, or I can send you a PDF copy. Um, and you can fill that out and then send it, send it to us um, to complete everything. So the application form is going to ask for basic information about the student, so their birthday and that kind of thing. And it's also going to ask what program they're interested in. So you'll have to know, do they want to take the general English program? Do they want the business English program? Do they want 20 lessons per week? Do they want 30 lessons per week? If you're not quite sure, but you still want to begin the application process, you can put that in and then send us an email and say, maybe the student's deciding between two programs, for example. So we're always happy to answer questions when it comes to the programs. So really, that's the first step. You need to fill out the application form either online or send it to us, the PDF, um, that we can send you then so that you have that on file. Um, the second step then is it kind of has different parts. The first thing is that you're going to have to go online and pay the application fee. So we have a $125 application fee, and this allows us to cover all the administrative costs for filing the I-20 and that sort of thing. So you can pay via PayPal, wire transfer, uh, credit cards, we have lots of different ways. If you fill the application out online, it'll take you right to the PayPal so that you can pay that application fee. Um, but if you want to pay separately, we can always send an invoice for the application fee as well. So there's a, a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, if you want the I-20 sent to you quickly, um, we have a service so we can send it via DHL. So we can send um, a tracked package to you. It generally takes just a few days to get to you that way. So if you already have a, a visa appointment scheduled, for example, we recommend doing this way because it's, you know, we can guarantee that it's going to get to you. We use DHL for this service. Um, so the $75 fee is just the fee to pay for that DHL fee. Otherwise, we'll send it to you just via regular mail. So make sure that you check that on the application if you do want it sent express mail. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the application fee and then the express fee will need to be paid at the, the time of submitting the application. The next thing that you're going to have to think about is all the documentation that you need to send. Luckily, there's not that much that you need to have, but there are a few things. So the first thing is we're going to need a copy of the student's passport. And we need like the, the informational page, so the page that has their picture on it. If they also have a, a tourist visa, you could also send a copy of the page that has the tourist visa on it, for example. Um, the other thing that you're going to need is a financial bank statement. So the financial bank statement needs to show that the student has enough funds in order to support their study. And this is something that the government is going to want to see in order to issue the student visa. If the student needs to just come on a tourist visa, you don't need to worry about things. So this process is just if the student's applying for the student visa in order to issue the I-20 for them. In order to issue the I-20, we have to see that the student has at least 2,500 US dollars for every month of study in their account. Now this needs to be money in their account in what we would call a liquid format, um, which means it can't be assets and things like that. This needs to be money that's held in the account. Um, and there's really not a whole lot of flexibility there. So we need to recommend $2,500 really at a minimum for the student to, to be able to get their I-20. Now, students can use that money in the account then afterwards to pay for tuition and accommodation. So it doesn't need to be that much money plus the money for tuition. That's just one, one lump sum that they need to show in there. So 2,500 US dollars for every month of study. And again, just to repeat, if they need a, a tourist visa and they're, they're gonna come on the tourist visa, they don't need to submit that bank statement. But if they do want to apply for a student visa and they want the I-20, they're going to need to have that bank statement. The bank statement should be in the student's name. If it's not in the student's name, then we also need a financial guarantee form. And we have those um, in PDF form that we can send you. And that's just going to, let's say it's a parent's bank account. 
it'll there'll just be a form that says that the parents have this, um, but the funds in it will be used for the student. Um, so it's a really straightforward form, um, but it's just one more step to remember. And then the next thing to think about is if the student's applying for the University Pathway Program and they want to do um, what we call an overseas conditional admission, meaning that they want to get acceptance to the university at the same time as getting acceptance to our language program, they're going to need to send a little bit more. So they're going to have to send us their high school transcripts and any sort of a graduate study or undergraduate study, whatever schooling they've done, we are going to need to see those transcripts. Um, and in addition to that, we also have a $100 conditional admissions fee. But with that, we'll do the application process for the student then, and we'll be able to send them our acceptance letter along with the conditional acceptance letter of the university. So that as soon as the student's done with the language, they can go straight on to university. Now, if you're not sure about this or you have more questions, we can talk much more about how conditional admission works. Um, and they don't have to. We can help students with that process after they arrive here as well. Um, but if you are interested, we can talk more about that a little bit later. Um, and really then the last step, once everything's submitted, we'll follow up with you and make sure all the documents are in line. And then we'll just need to confirm that the student is when they're going to arrive, if they need to be picked up from the airport, do they want accommodation? If so, do they want homestay? Do they want dormitory? So that's sort of the next step after all the application process is um, complete. So yeah, hopefully that sort of gives you a, a brief overview of the process. Like I said, the first time we do it, we'll walk through, you know, sort of step by step and make sure we have everything. Any questions, you know, you're more than free to text me via WhatsApp or send us an email. Um, but we'll make sure that we follow up, that we have everything in line. But hopefully the process is simple enough. Once we do it once with one student, then the next one will just be, you know, sort of more automatic. So, yeah, thanks so much. Um, I'm sorry we weren't able to talk uh, in person via Skype, but hopefully we can set something up for a little bit later if you have any more questions, and we'll go from there. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye.